Hey guys, this is Mario from ShockingFit.com and I'm here in Zagreb, Croatia. It's uh, quite a foggy day and here behind me you can see the cathedral and this is the best I can get in terms of the view because of this fog. But um, it's pretty uh, chilly and a pretty good place to be, uh, pretty relaxing and a nice holiday atmosphere here. And the, the topic of today's video that I want to talk about is how much should you rest between sets? And for me, coming from that bro science, bodybuilding uh, kind of uh, universe, this is one thing that completely changed in the last few months because evidence was coming out from the studies of Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, specifically a study done in November uh, 2015 where he almost completely debunked the myth that you should be training uh, with lower rest periods for hypertrophy. So the general guidelines that we're familiar with that most people know is you should rest 60 to 90 seconds for hypertrophy and you should rest two to three minutes for strength. That's something we've done for a long time and I guess we also played a little bit into, okay, the more pump we get, you know, the keep the lower rest periods low, the more you grow and all that Arnold Schwarzenegger pumping iron thing. And uh, what this study did, it actually debunked a lot of those myths that we had and gave us some new guidelines based on evidence and on actual research and on quantifiable things that we can apply to our training. So what was the study? So they took 21 individuals for eight weeks and they compared two groups. Uh, one group rested one minute and the other group rested three minutes between sets. So both groups, everything else was kept equal. So group one and group two were doing uh, three days a week training, full body, and they were doing uh, eight to 12 reps for each set. And it was about three sets and seven exercises per session. So with everything kept uh, the same and only the um, rest periods changing. And what happened in the end is that the group with three minutes of rest outperformed and I mean outgained quote unquote they get more they got more strength and more muscle than the group that did one minute and even the endurance was the same so even the thing that we thought of like okay if you keep the rest periods low at least you're building endurance and well that's not really the case the endurance was the same in both groups so this kind of completely changed the way I design programs in general I mean I've been designing my programs toward more like uh, okay the volume based approach the more volume you get the more you're gonna grow and the more strength you're gonna build and this just kind of confirms that whole thing is that you don't want to make sh you don't want to have something like rest periods impair your volume so volume is the priority number one so reps times sets times weight that is the priority number one the, the workload the sheer amount of work you're doing that is the primary driver of strength and hypertrophy and things like rest periods don't play that much of a role and they only serve there to give you enough rest to be able to perform the same amount of volume so to put it an example let's say you do a bench press for 10 reps to 25 pounds and you just rest 60 seconds and that that set of 225 times 10 was 9 out of 10 intensity you're most likely not going to be able to perform the same set and for the same amount of reps with the with that good of a form on the second set, especially on the third set, if you don't give your body enough rest. So in that way, you can see how this study works. Basically, you will make sure that you have enough rest to be able to perform the same amount of volume, that being three minutes or five minutes. I mean, you can do up to five, it's fine. I mean, even above five in some case where you're doing one rep max testing and things like that it is preferred because you want to get uh, like full focus, you want to get the all that fatigue out. I mean, you want to rest as much as you can. So the way I design my programs right now and uh, the way for my clients and in general, what I would suggest is that for compound lifts, do at least three minutes of rest. And that will allow you enough time. I mean, you can eyeball it a little bit and just see how you feel. If you're completely rested, maybe your intensity is not right. But typically, if you're doing some set of like 10 or 8 to 12, you will need about three minutes rest if that is a compound lift. So compound lifts, uh, multiple muscle group lift. So if you're doing that, then stick around that three minutes. If you're doing also the accessory movements, if you're used to doing them very low rest, uh, if you have unlimited time in the gym, you can even increase uh, the amount of rest you do on those to allow yourself to perform the more more weight, more reps. Or um, in a way that you will structure your training is that you won't you won't ever run out of breath. Basically, you will always keep that uh, volume as a top priority. So there's two scenarios that I see here happening. So scenario number one is someone who has unlimited time in the gym. 
and that person doesn't even have to worry about this. Basically, you can just rest as much as you need. And if your workout lasts two and a half hours, I mean, who gives a fuck? Because you can, you have that time. You can afford to do that. But if your time is limited, here's a few of the things I employ myself in my training and with my clients that I've managed to compress the workouts to get the same amount of volume with keeping those uh, rest periods moderately um, high as well as giving yourself enough rest. So the first thing I would suggest is employing supersets on all accessory movements that you're doing with opposite muscle groups. So biceps, triceps especially. So almost all of my biceps and triceps works is done in supersets. Uh, the only scenario that this wouldn't be possible, I, must, I guess, you know, if your gym is super, super crowded and you don't have uh, the equipment available to be able to superset. E even in that case, I would maybe choose exercise that you can superset and just find the alternative that you, you can cut your workout shorter because it's better to get that volume than not to get that volume uh, by not doing the exercise and um, keeping the workout too long, basically, for yourself. So that makes the workout not sustainable. So instead of also doing supersets, which is essentially a, you do one set and then you go into another one without rest and then you take a minute or two rest, you could also employ something called three, three sets. So with three sets, you would do three exercises in a row. So the way I do that is, let's say I do a biceps exercise, no rest, triceps exercise, maybe a 20, 30 seconds rest and I do it go into like a lateral raise or something for my uh, rear delt, let's say. I'll do something like a face pull. So I'm... Uh, practically combining three different muscle groups that, that aren't really connected to each other in, like in, a, in, a, in a strong way. I mean, you're doing your whole body, obviously, a little bit in, in all of these, but it's still effective training because it allows me to get the volume and I feel like I'm rested enough to hit all three of them with the maximum amount of weight and with good form. So that's something I use a lot, and I use a lot of uh, alternating sets. So I will rarely do a pressing movement after a pressing movement. So that's uh, one of the things, I mean, if you've done, downloaded a bunch of uh, bodybuilding programs, you've noticed that a lot of them are programmed in a way, okay, you hit your chest first with two, three exercises, and then you go into your back if it's like an upper-lower split. And uh, the way I program my workouts is more like, okay, let's do a couple of sets of chest, and then let's do a couple of sets of back, and then let's do a couple of sets of chest. Because that allows me, when I'm doing this chest sec for the second time, I had enough rest because during, during the pulling movements, I'm still resting the chest, so still resting the pressing uh, muscle groups. So that allows me to maintain that high volume and even keep the rest a little bit lower if I need to. So it's all about volume, as you can see, and volume is the primary thing. So you want to make sure that nothing is impairing your volume, things like tempo, I mean, deliberately re reducing uh, the speed of the bar, you know, like the negatives, forcing the negatives and things like that. I mean, that has a place in training, obviously, to create some muscle damage and all that. But it shouldn't be um, overused. It should be used as a tool only on an occasion because it's actually limiting the amount of total volume you're doing, which is going to, in the long run, prevent you from uh, getting that progressive overload and getting the maximum amount of strength and muscle gains. So... Having said that, I mean, I hope you got some practical tips out of this and uh, you can start using supersets, alternating sets and three sets in your training. And if you want to uh, see a really good example how to put this all together and all these things that I talked about today in the guidelines, I'm going to actually uh, put a link below in the description of my Lean and Strong Workout Guide, which you can get for free. It's a, uh, about a 30 to 40 page PDF that uh, has a workout plan for training four to six days a week. It's... Um, intermediate advanced routine i would say more leaning toward the like late intermediate advanced phase it has a progressive overload component put in together and it's a very well put together program and i've got a lot of good feedback from it and a lot of people will just messaging me and saying uh that they got amazing results from it so definitely try that out and uh, when you download the routine, you're going to see there's a multiple sections there explaining all these variables and volume and all these things that I talked about here. So if this video uh, helped you realize something with your own training that you need to change your rest periods, if you were following the traditional guidelines, um, like 60, 90 seconds, two to three minutes, leave me a comment below what you think about this uh, study. I'm actually going to link the study as well in the description so you can check that out. And once again, if you like the video, make sure to click subscribe below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.